Welcome back to our second installment of Ask the AD. I'm joined here by Scott Sidwell. I'm Frank Alaco, the Executive Senior Associate Athletic Director at the University of San Francisco. Welcoming back Scott to the Hilltop. Scott's been away for a few weeks and I'm sure he's excited to see all the progress being made here on the Hilltop. Welcome back, Scott. Thanks, Frank. Thanks for having me. Uh, just a wonderful, uh, wonderful to come back to the Hilltop and see all the great progress we're making this summer with all the projects and, and certainly lots of uh, comings and goings and uh, there's a lot of excitement building for the upcoming year. Scott, we have a first question from Brian Hook via Twitter. It says, nice to see Cal back on the schedule, but will we ever get a chance to see a game with them back on the Hilltop? Brian, uh, thank you for asking. We actually are uh, starting the first game of a three-year uh, deal with Cal. We're going to play th uh, this year uh, at Cal and then next year uh, back here on the Hilltop at uh, War Memorial. And, uh, and so we're looking forward to that, and then, and then we'll have a future game uh, beyond that. Scott, tell me about the Pac-12 games that were being played on the Hilltop this year. Yeah, so we're going to play uh, Stanford and Arizona State as a, a return games. Last year, if you remember, we went on the road, Frank, and, and we played both those games. And, and in return, they're coming back to us, which is very unique for you know, the WCC to have home games, uh, home and home games with Pac-12 opponents. So we're excited to get those, those two games back here uh, in the Sobrato Center, and, and we're looking for fans to come up and, and, uh, and fill the stands. It's going to be a great season. Should be a great uh, environment on the hilltop with those two powerhouses coming in. Second question via email. Scott, can you give us a quick update on what's going on in the gym? Well, I tell you, you're going to see some, some renderings here uh, as we go through you know, and, and, and do a, a tour of the uh, Sobrato Center and all that's happening. But I think that the two things to really highlight are is that we've, we've made you know, some significant progress. We had some great donors step up, and, and we're redoing a significant number of our locker rooms highlighted by our men's and women's basketball locker rooms. As a matter of fact, Frank, we have a rendering of, of what we're going to be doing there uh, this summer. That should be done as we start the fall, as well as other teams that are moving into some locker rooms and renovations there. So that's a, a great step forward for us on the, you know, the heels of the Salquist Center that we did last year. We're going to see some branding done. So really for, for our students, you know, who are athletes here at USF, we're giving them you know, very, very first class quality experience, great facilities uh, in the spaces that they, they use on a day in day out basis. Now, the second phase of that is, is what's happening here on the, the arena level. And that's really what we've been talking about for a long time. You know, we've got the Sobrato Center uh, commences right now. It starts with we put a big wall up, you know, on the west side, which was going to enclose that whole space. Work has already um, you know, started behind the scenes doing some stuff, and then we'll start in earnest, you know, with the groundbreaking sometime later this fall, and we look to be done, you know, by the fall of 19. So that, that is, you're going to see that this year as you enter War Memorial. In addition to that, as we're closed down the gym, we're redoing all the lighting, which is making a huge impact, you know, right away, and then that will lead into some other things that will happen next summer as the, as the main construction is happening on the Sobrato Center. So we look to, you know, a year from now, really be you know finalizing the last phases of the Sobrato Center phase phase two now uh, since we've done a lot of other things and then really be able to open that up for the fall of 19 season. Scott I know you had to see a great show back in Washington DC on the Temptations well this summer <laughs> we've had a great uh, beat here going on and we keep hearing those hammers going every yeah. day but the progress that's happened on the hilltop. I, as you know uh, at our last staff meeting we, we talked about the signs of progress we have to embrace that when you hear the jackhammers when you, when you see people moving around you see different things happening that's that's exciting that's exciting for our coaches it's exciting for our athletes that are here all summer working out I can tell you came back from that vacation and went down for a workout and I, the energy is is the best I've ever ever seen it and so you know it's exciting exciting times you get kicked off here in about a month and and get things going. Scott we always hear about the great academic performance of our student athletes with a 3.37 GPA combined with all our athletes pretty impressive what's the significance of the Don's latest finish in the Learfield Directors Cup? Well you know we had our uh, our, our highest finish that we ever had 105th uh, when I arrived we, uh, we started at 209th, and the Learfield Cup is based upon your postseason appearances, how far you go, where you finish in the national rankings on a number of different levels. And so for us, obviously, buoyed by a number two in the country and women's cross country, but also looking at you know, what we were able to do with um, men's soccer advancing into the second round, and then looking at our men's golf, and then we had individual track runners that go. So all that combined pushes you into right on the cusp of being a top 100 program, which is what we said we wanted to be and so now the challenge is now we're that we're at higher ground now that we have aimed higher we're going to continue to do that but now we want to consistently be a top 100 program we want to be top three in the wcc commissioner's cup and we're going to jump up and win that thing 
know, this year we won the men's all sport trophy. So we're excited about that we're at a platform that now we can jump into a, another level, which is really competing at the winning at the highest level for us. And it's one of our four pillars. With the ever-changing landscape of college athletics, we've been hit with a little change uh, just today as our longtime cross-country track and field head coach, Helen Lehman Winters, accepted a new position at Oregon. What has her impact on the Hilltop meant? To I tell you what, I can't say enough great things about Helen Lehman Winters and what she's done for our program. You know, she, she elevated us. I mean, if you just what I was just talking about, she elevated us to higher ground. She, she put us on the national stage you know, in women's cross-country and, and our track program, and, and it was widely regarded as the best you know, uh, women's track and uh, field and cross country coach out there. And subsequently, Oregon, who is one of the premier programs there in Track Town USA, came calling and, and was something that, that uh, we, you know, talked about. And we certainly wanted her to stay and, and, and worked hard to try to have her stay. But at the end of the day, it was the right thing for her, the right thing for her family, and the right thing for her career. And we, we endorse that. And we, think we wish her nothing but the best. And, and uh, she leaves us in a great position for us to move forward. Uh, her top ass uh, assistant, Benji, will will take over here in, in the interim basis and really move us forward. And then we're looking forward to good long things to come from that. Scott, your energy and enthusiasm is quite evident every day. And I know as we approach this year, what are you most excited about in the upcoming 2018-19 athletic year? I, I, I think the biggest thing for me is just our enhanced expectations, right? Not, not only internally, but externally. And that's, you know, that's a fine line. You, you don't want to put your expectations too far out there and then you don't achieve them and then it's not perceived that, that you've done well. But I think we've really, you know, crossed the threshold. We're, we're, as you said, we're, we're sitting on the cusp of being a top 100 program. That's one of five programs in, in uh, the non-football playing programs, and we're in the top five. We want to be the best, you know, in, in, in that category, and then move into another category. So that has become the expectation, and what's matching that is is the support that our donors are giving us, what's, what our administration gives us, what we're doing here internally every day. This has become the culture that we've, you know, all built, worked real hard to build, and and now we move that forward. And how high can we take that? That's what I'm most excited about. Well, we're looking forward to a special year, and we appreciate everyone's support and uh, continued. Reach out to us, ask the AD. Happy to be here with Scott Sidwell, our director of athletics. Go Dons. <laughs>